The following program discusses sensitive issues. Parents are cautioned that some material may be too candid for younger children. Hello and welcome to Pure Choices. I'm your host, Pastor Joshua Nelson, and I'm so glad you decided to join us. We have another great uh, sh uh, program for you today. We're talking about lust, and the title is Three Little Words, I Lust You. Yeah, I lust you. So we're going to talk about that, but before we get into it, I want to introduce our panel once again. I'll start with my brother to my left, Keen Baxter who is, our, again, our scholar here, who is the <laughs> recent <laughs> graduate of the Andrews University Theological Seminary, uh, MDiv graduate. We also have Pastor Corey Douglas, who is a pastor in the Central States Conference. And we also have Jean Mogusu, who is uh, currently a seminary student and also a PhD uh, recipient or <laughs> candidate. <laughs> candidate. Thank you, candidate. Uh, so yeah, we'll make sure we let, let everyone know about that. We'll we also see. have <laughs> Pastor Marcus Jackson, who is a pastor in, in my conference, the South Atlantic Conference, Thank over you. there in Sumter and Manning. Uh, and and um, I'm, all, I'm Pastor Nelson from the Lake City and uh, Marion District in South Carolina. So we're just excited to be here and to really discuss this important discussion topic today. So we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, we're talking about lust, okay, something that we all struggle with. Mm. You got to be honest. Mm -hmm. We all struggle with lust. Mm -hmm. And especially even in so far, you could say some, some of us, many of us have had porn, a porn or sex addictions. Mm. Okay. So now we wanted to just talk, let's just talk about first off, what is lust? Just the core, what is lust? And compare that to what is love? Mm. I would say uh, lust and love have similar connections, seemingly the same. Uh, but the difference is, I would say love is where we, we understand John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Uh, it lust, uh, love is an, is an aspect of giving to someone. Lust is more so in the reverse. They both are four letters. They both start with the letter L. But lust more so kind of specifically says, what can you do for me? Mm -hmm. What can you give me? While love says, I'm, what I'm going to give to you, lust says, I need you to do this for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to self-gratification and yeah. really... Uh, just getting what you want right. out of it. Okay. And we recognize a lot of people in relationships now are not really loving their lusting. Mm -hmm. A lot sure. of people are, are in, infatuated with someone or mm -hmm. just because they saw this on TV, this is what they want, an ideal in a mate, whether it's a man or woman, they desire that, not necessarily trying to give. Mm -hmm. it's just want to get something for themselves. I yeah. want to um, just continue that thought. Um, it actually, um, in corp, the word, actually means desire, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wanting something. Mm -hmm. And um, it's actually wanting, I, I like to think of, of it this way, sin is meeting a legitimate need in an illegitimate way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have sexual desires. We've already, um, we've already established that God gave us sexual desires. Mm -hmm. um, lust is desiring to fulfill those needs in a way that God did not intend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. lust is, is, is wanting something that God did not intend for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now let's look at this issue of, of lust according to what Jesus says, because this verse in Matthew 5, 28 is really alarming to many of us because it says, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You can flip that around for a woman who looks at some, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. lust. So that's taking it pretty extreme. Mm -hmm. You know, would you, would you not? I mean, how is that really possible? I mean, we, we, as, as men, we just thought, as a man, I'll say, it's hard, mm -hmm. even though I'm getting married, you know, you see a, another uh, lady or someone who looks good, mm -hmm. you see, doesn't it natural? Your mind just kind of goes there. Yep. So what is, what is, what is Jesus really talking about? I don't know that I would uh, 
even isolated to just men because even women um, sure. we're always talking about the Brad Pitts and the you know <laughs> yeah, um, so. the Idris Albers you know <laughs> you know whichever your persuasion is and and you, you look at this um, you have lots of people who are is. looking at this man and you you know going the Channing Tatum's you know mm -hmm. anytime the man takes off his shirt everyone is mm -hmm. literally screaming Swearing. their heads mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. um, and and it kind of gives this idea of that is what we should be looking for you know is a person who is going to make everybody else's um, heads turn and 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 not necessarily go beyond that so it's more of a last kind of gives more of a physical connotation mm -hmm. it has to be more physical it's not about who you are it's about what you what you look like mm -hmm. yes well you know I would I would define lo uh, lust as because man we defined uh, love and marriage and sex in the in the context of being in God's image mm -hmm. and I believe that when you look at somebody that's how you should look at them as if they are in in God's image mm -hmm. and when you approach or make an attempt at love mm -hmm. outside of the image of God or outside of looking at that person that way that what you are doing is you're lusting because you have removed God's image from the equation mm -hmm. and I think that what Jesus is getting at and it's actually beautiful in the context because he's talking to those people who have taken his word and have taken the spirit of the word out of it, who have mm -hmm. taken the law and have taken the spirit of the law out of it and now concentrate only on the physicality of the law, that which we see on the outside. And so, you know, when Jesus is making this statement of looking at the woman and, and lusting and it happening in your heart, he's saying it's not about necessarily what you do with your hands only, mm -hmm. but it's about your intention, your heart. And if God is not at the center of what you are doing, even in regards to something like trying to be holy mm -hmm. or trying to be pure or clean, you know, if God is not at the center of it, then, you know, you have already lusted. And, the, right. and, you know, and I don't want to get preachery, but some of us lust after being Christians, mm -hmm. you know, but we'll, we'll, that's another conversation <laughs> another day. Okay, so, so look at this thing now. We, we are lusting in, we are, we're, we are lusting in our hearts, mm -hmm. right? That's what God's trying to, to really make us say, okay, look, it's more, it's, it's, you're sinning by doing it. It's, let's not focus always on a legalistic matter of it. Thou mm -hmm. shalt not do this, and you're okay. Mm -hmm. But let's focus on also now what's happening inside of your mind. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking about? Okay, and that's really where sin is birthed. Right. Mm -hmm. I think you're um, bringing that up. That that um, quote from Jesus in Matthew five is important. If you look at a woman to lust at after her in your mm -hmm. heart, you've committed adultery. Mm -hmm. Because some people see it. Maybe he was just speaking in hyperbole. Because mm -hmm. it, it's. I mean, is it possible to not sin even in thought? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the standard is too high. And, and because we, like you said, Corey, we've taken the um, spirit out of the commandments, we've lowered the standard, mm -hmm. and we try to, to, um, to live up to it based on our own efforts. And we kind of make excuses, and we say, okay, this is, you know, this is sin, and this is not, so mm -hmm. I can do this and, mm -hmm. and not the other. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, understanding the spirit yeah. and understanding that Jesus did not sin in in thought mm -hmm. or action mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. so let's really tackle that because you know that's serious what you're saying because in in reality what Jesus presents what he shows and, and tells us what to do and what he's telling to the Pharisees they're alarmed because it's pretty much impossible mm -hmm. now so does anyone have a problem with me saying that it's impossible to be perfect no um, some people will yeah, very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know, for example, um, being honest, you know, as a growing up and you know reading the Bible, I'm like, how could Jesus ever be perfect? Mm -hmm. In the aspect of you know growing up and you know children, you know, make Mary did a great job in helping mm -hmm. to raise her son, and Joseph did as well. I remember when I was seven years old. I remember going to uh, one of my mom's friends' places, um, and she used to go visit her friend, and her friend had a daughter. We we're around the same age. And she took me downstairs, and she took me to uh, this basement area. And in the basement area, there was magazines. Mm -hmm. And there was a magazine of a naked woman. Mm -hmm. And at the age of seven, even in that, I still see those, Im that, those mm -hmm. images. They're mm -hmm. seared in my seared mind. In mm -hmm. It's amazing how Christ, in his situation as growing up, was raised so well that he, that he was able to veer from eating in those situations. He was tempted in all points as we are, mm -hmm. yet without sin. Right. And so with Christ living a perfect life, it is hard because mm -hmm. I've made mistakes. I've been exposed to things. Mm -hmm. But I do have to ask Christ to continue to live in me, to take those things out. And when that situation starts popping up in my head, mm -hmm. to ask God to nail it, to, you know, hit it, hit it on the head mm -hmm. to shut it down. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't, it will continue to build up. So what you're saying is you cannot do it, though, because I, I can't you, do your it. story is with, with, the, with, the, uh, with Christ really 
doing it through you. Right. So well, it is. Go, go ahead. Well, let me, let me, I think it's important to define perfection. Okay. You know, if okay. we're going to move forward. Yeah. And it's interesting that we go here because just the other week I was talking to uh, one of my church about this prayer meeting. You know, in Matthew 5, Jesus uh, in, the, in the Sermon on the Mount says, Be ye perfect. As your Father in heaven is perfect, of course, yeah. mm -hmm. quoting when God says to Abraham, be thou perfect unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that we take that verse and then we say, well, we should just do everything right. Mm -hmm. And we define perfection as no flaws, mm -hmm. look shiny all the time, you know, everything is going to be all right, you know, but do your best to be this way. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that the context in which Jesus gives this verse, mm -hmm. he is talking about relationship. He mm -hmm. talks about how you treat one another, mm -hmm. how you treat your enemy. And even, like I said, God says to Moses, be thou perfect unto me, mm -hmm. talking more about relationship, which I think is interesting because we're talking about yeah, sex and right. relationship and that God establishes perfection mm -hmm. based on our relationship with him. And so mm -hmm. when God says, and Jesus says, be perfect, it's like saying, be thou in perfect relationship with me. Right. Always yeah. strive to be in that connection with me. Mm -hmm. And that's where we mess up sometimes because that is the base yeah. and yeah. the foundation out of which all of what we're talking yeah. about grows. Yeah, that's, yeah go, ahead, go ahead. Relationship with God and with each, each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, yeah. It goes both ways. And it's one. And the thing is, you can't. It's one and the same. Exactly. Yeah, can't, it's yeah. like the cross. There's mm -hmm. an upward beam and then there's a horizontal so, beam so, as well. So right. you're saying the reality is basically that as hard as I may try not to look at pornography, mm -hmm. as hard as I may try to stop my addiction, that basically the solution is not in me. I, I, as hard as I may try, I'm not going to be able to stop. Is, yeah. that what you, is that what you're telling me? Well, we're not saying not to, not to try. That's okay. not what we're saying. We're not, okay. we're not saying pray and then watch That's pornography <laughs> and pray right. and hope that eventually God will yeah. magically yeah. touch your chin and turn it away from the television screen or the computer. Right. What we're saying is that not watching the pornography mm -hmm. and, not, and trying hard not to do these things is not what makes you pure. Mm. Christ makes you pure, Amen. and Amen. you honor the process of Christ purifying you mm. by not polluting your mind mm. with the things that will corrupt you. Mm. Okay, good. Um, Mark has been uh, Gene. Uh, Luke chapter 15 speaks about a story about a man. Um, he, cleaned the, he cleaned the spirit out, put nothing mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. vacuum. Mm -hmm. But yet still, that spirit looked around and saw him and nothing in it. And he said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back in this place, mm -hmm. and I'm bring seven of my seven. boys mm -hmm. with me. Yeah. Yeah. And this person will be in a worse situation than he was before. Yeah. If, we, if we think that we can do this of our own strength and we do not put Jesus Christ in us, mm -hmm. it's kind of like saying when we put Christ in us and we ask him to live a life through us so it can be a part it out, mm -hmm. that's what we can do. Because if not, those demons will come in and may, I may have looked at one magazine. Mm -hmm. But if I have not put Christ in me, I'm going to look at worse, more, more intense <laughs> magazines, triple, quadruple X magazines, yeah. watch the TV shows and pay the money, and then do all those things. And if we don't put Christ in us, that's the dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's not by words. Yeah, and, and, and more, more so because Marcus literally took the words out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> one thing we have to understand is that we're not trying, we're not saying that... When we, when we, most people believe that when, when we tell them to, that we need, God expects for us to live a holy life, that mm -hmm. you just need to stop doing what you're doing. Right. That is an important part of it. Mm -hmm. But however, it is not the, the source. That is just treating a symptom. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, when you go to the doctor, if, mm -hmm. if I have a cold, I can, I can be given medicine for my fever. I can be given everything else. Mm -hmm. But if the doctor is not treating my, the, the cause the for virus. it, you mm -hmm. know, the yeah. virus, mm -hmm. then I'm going to be sick all over again. Yeah, that's and, and, that's, and that's how we, we, that's how we tend to, to um, treat sin in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm a liar, so I'm going to stop lying. Mm -hmm. I, I am a cheat, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a, I, I steal. Yeah. You know, so I, I need to stop stealing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're concentrating so much on what, what not, not to, to do, do. Mm -hmm. that you forget that there's so much more that you ought to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the thing. There's, I love this analogy. Um, uh, uh, someone, a friend of mine said this, you know, it's like going into a room of darkness, mm -hmm. you know, and getting a bucket mm -hmm. because you want that, you, you know, you want some light in it. So you get a bucket and try to, 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 to Damn. carry out all yeah. the darkness yeah. out of it <laughs> instead of just turning on the lights. Switch, right, right. you know and mm -hmm. and so and and that <laughs> 
Yeah. And that analogy of the, the man with the demons is, mm. is so great. Yeah. And that's why it's in the Bible. Because yeah. we are trying to take things out of our lives, mm -hmm. but we don't recognize that there is something that needs to come into right. our mm -hmm. lives. Yeah, exactly. And it's not until it comes into our lives that you get the ability. Um, it's not even that which comes in is what pushes out mm -hmm. the, okay. the rest of the things. Okay, so I want to talk about the how. You were going to say something in regards to Along with uh, what Mark was said, I, I'm thinking of a, a, a more current example of the, the, the demons, the demons leaving and then coming back. Mm -hmm. um, I was watching a talk show, and um, a lady had a um, stomach bypass, I think. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because she wanted to lose gastric, a weight. Gastric okay. bypass. And um, gastric bypass, mm -hmm. right. So she had it. She lost a lot of weight. Of course, um, you're not able to fit as much food in your stomach, mm -hmm. so um, you eat more, but um, you're not able, to, you're not as, you, don't, you eat more frequently mm -hmm. yeah. because your capacity is, is, is shrunken, right. and so you lose a lot more weight. Um, so she was fine mm -hmm. as far as the weight was concerned, mm -hmm. but she became an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Because the fact of the matter was she was addicted to food. Mm -hmm. She treated this, wow. this symptom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the yeah. yeah. addiction popped up in another yeah. aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Wow. wow. I, I've said this to my church, and it may sound weird. The problem is not sin. Mm -hmm. The problem is sin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. mm -hmm. The problem is not <laughs> sin. Christ sin. defeated sin. Right. Mm -hmm. The problem is the fact that we have not allowed Christ to come into us mm -hmm. and get that sin out. I have a house. I have yard, but my yard has weeds, and I, I get weed killed, and I spread, and those things will wilt up a little bit, or they don't do anything, mm -hmm. because I haven't gotten to the root. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so if we don't get into the root of the issue and allow Christ to come in and pull that root out, mm -hmm. we're going to continue to have the same symptoms over again. Okay. I love it. I love what y'all been saying. So let's now talk about some ways to do it, because you know a lot of people, people watching may say, well, how did you do it? How did you really do that? I mean, I heard you're saying about having Christ in you. Um, we have, I don't know if we talked about dying itself, but mm -hmm. you know, how does that really take place? What am I doing? And I'm, I'm here, I'm trying to stop watching things. What do I really do? What's the first step that I take? How can I hear God's voice? What, what would you say to him? Well, uh, okay. I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to be cliche, you yeah. know, but we're on a pure choices. We're talking about relationship and relating to each other and intimacy and you know, it's a relationship that God asks us to. Yeah. You know, the Bible refers mm -hmm. to Abraham as a friend of God mm -hmm. at the end of the day. It's what God seeks is friendship. Mm -hmm. And you know, when, you, when you talk about it, this is why I say it works so hard at destroying mm -hmm. our view of relationship mm -hmm. is because God is inviting us to intimacy. And mm -hmm. what does that mean? That means that, yeah, read your Bible, pray every day, make time for him, spend time with him, just as you would someone you wanted to date. Mm -hmm. But that also means that it's not easy. That yeah. also means that when you start out, there's going to be a little bit of, you know, you know, I'm a little nervous right. because yeah. I don't really yeah. know, I don't what know what to do. do. Yeah. You, know, you know, hey, right. God. You know? Right. But, but as, you, as you develop, mm -hmm. as you talk to him more and more mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. and I'm, t I'm telling you this from experience, you know, you, yeah. begin, you begin to get closer to him right. where now, and I, this may sound, you know, a little... Uh, contemporary, but sometimes when I pray to God, it's not even about your head and mm -hmm. get solemn. It's like, God, I need to get where I'm going today. I know you got it. Could you please? While, while I'm walking yeah. to the car, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. because I'm on the, on, on I mean, the basis yeah. with him now yeah. where we're intimate, you know, yeah. and I understand, I know when he's talking mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to come in meditation as it yeah. did three or four years ago right, right. when I had to really sit down in a dark, in a quiet room. Mm -hmm. But as I have grown with God, mm -hmm. our relationship has grown. And yeah. also, I don't know if I'm getting ahead, and I'm sorry, All right. but I talked about this on the uh, interview uh, uh, program. But what we do is we, we present relationship with Christ and becoming pure without presenting the struggle of it. Mm. We act like from day one, as soon as you turn around mm -hmm. and decide to go the other direction, mm -hmm. that everything is going to be easy. Mm -hmm. But there's a struggle. Yeah. You know, every day we got to wrestle with the fact that our yeah. flesh doesn't yeah. want to yeah. talk to God. Yeah. 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 And sometimes we got to, um, it has to be, it has to be a decision before there's a feeling. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. to decide, this yeah. is what I'm going to do, exactly. even though I don't yeah. feel like it today. Right. And the That's same right. thing is important in, in, rea in pure, pure, mm -hmm. making pure choices. Mm -hmm. Today, I might not want to make a pure choice, yeah. and it's not going to be easy, yeah. but as I continue to do it, knowing that Christ is working to clean me up, mm -hmm. it, begins, it begins to get easier and easier as I go okay. on. Okay, and, and Gene, I know you're about to say something, but I want you also to address you know, that, the struggle. How do you really fight through it? And that uh, was I, that's exactly where I was going. It's it's a it's it's kind of like love. I I love the analogy of love because it's a it's a perfect 
uh, example. Mm -hmm. God, when you when you're in love with someone. Um, you want to spend all the time in the world exactly. with them. You can't, literally, you cannot bear being apart from them. Yeah. And so, but in order to, to get to the point where you're in love with someone, you really have to get to know that person. Yeah. And so at the beginning, you know, it may be like, you know, Corey said, it may be kind of awkward, like, hey, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you're wondering, what do I say next? Will they, will they like me? Uh, you know, just the, if I tell them, if I show them who I am. Right, right. And, and so it, it is mm. the same way with mm. God. You know, you have to get past the idea that he will not like you mm. just the way you are. Wow. Because guess what? He already knows you and he loves My you. Lord. He is seeking to have yes. relationship with Ooh. you. He wants to spend time with you. Yeah, he's yeah, already yeah. there, yeah. you know, waiting for you yeah, yeah. to mm. spend time with you. He's pursuing you mm. all the time, constantly. Mm. I mean, don't make me preach. <laughs> Now. Um, yeah, it's got to get hot in here. <laughs> My Lord. But, but that is yeah. the ultimate love story. That's uh, it. You know, yeah. that is the ultimate love story. Like, seriously, nobody can love you like he can. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I mean God. Yeah. You know, because it's only until you get to the place where you recognize you are valued in his in his, in his his eyes mm. that you have the ultimate value. He, he loved you so much. He made you in his own image yeah, 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 yeah. so that he could have an experience with you. You, mm -hmm. in, in you know a relational experience with you yeah. and, and 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 that once we recognize that once you recognize your value mm. then it becomes so much easier to to be like hey god you know mm -hmm. i'm here today it's rough mm -hmm. i yeah. i really don't feel like talking to you yeah. mm -hmm. um but guess what i i want to get to know you yeah. mm -hmm. i want to um i want to spend time with you show me how to spend time with you i yeah. love um, I, I, I love telling people that I meet who are just starting out in their relationship. If you can't wake up in the morning to spend time with God, mm -hmm. just tell him. Yeah. Tell him, Lord, this is what I want to do. Yeah. I want to spend time with you, but you know me and sleep. <laughs> uh, we, we, love, we love each other, yeah, you right. know? Definitely. So if you want to spend, I, I have done this, mm. where I have, I have gone to bed dog tired, and I'm telling God, Lord, if you want to spend time wake with me, me wake me yes, up. Yeah. And guess what? I could be in bed by three at night studying mm -hmm. all, you know, mm -hmm. and I will wake up at five, yeah. and I will wake up so refreshed. Yeah. Yeah. And once I spend yeah. time with him, I'll be able to run through all day, not sleeping, nothing, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. just vibrant because he has woken me up Amen. and he has refreshed my, you know, my, my time with him has just been so refreshing yeah. that I'm not even exhausted anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, sister, you said a lot there. It's a <laughs> valuable thing, a valuable thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, that, that's really where it's at. And that's where we find the, the, the desire for purity mm -hmm. when you recognize who you are in him and that he loves you so much, yeah. you know, that he really desires to have, to let you have that gift of sex when it's time mm -hmm. because it's beautiful because he created it. Mm -hmm. And when we don't, we cheapen ourselves and we cheapen what he's really trying to do in us mm -hmm. and for us. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Um, in, in my experience, um, I was born and raised in the church and um, I had to get to the point, God brought me to the point where I had to despair of myself. I had to give up mm -hmm. on myself. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, and I don't know if I'm the only one, maybe I'm very stubborn or very slow, mm -mm. but I would try, I would fail, I would try, I would no, fail. You're not by yeah. And <laughs> it's like, you don't, mm -hmm. when do you give up on yourself? I mm -hmm. just had a lot of faith in myself for some mm -hmm. reason. But God brought me to the point where I realized in retro, looking at my life that. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not going to get this. As a matter of fact, you're mm -hmm. getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> Mercy. Yeah. God has, you have, we have to get to the point where we give up on ourselves. Exactly. Can't God do it. it. You Can't cannot it. keep the commandments. If you think you're keeping the commandments, you're not. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, that was the Pharisee's problem. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. this is why Jesus says, you know, you, you say don't commit adultery, but you're thinking about it. it. Yeah. 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 You, don't, you don't kill your, your brother, it's not just but you hate him in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus was raising the bar. He said, you guys don't yeah. have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you despair of yourself, he's like, what do I do? And then Jesus presents himself. And then he I got it. it. Yeah. I'm your savior. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So Amen. Die yeah. with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll bring you, I will do for mm -hmm. you what you can't do for yourself. It's not God helping you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's God yeah. doing it. It's God it's doing, doing it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and, and what you all are saying is so true. And I think probably one of the things we have to be very careful of 
is not to merit our walk to someone else's walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. you know, as we're looking at this show, Pure Choices, probably the context of con the people who are going to be watching this are going to be people, young adults, teenagers, maybe some people a little our age and some o and older. Um, but the challenge is, is that if, if I'm married myself on how someone else is walking or how someone else is walking, I'm finding myself at a problem because yeah. like the old story right. of, of running in a lane. If you run out, if you run in that lane and you, so I remember when I was uh, in high school, I was racing. People didn't think I could run, but back in the day, I was a little fast, you know. And, <laughs> you know I still run a little bit more, but it just takes a little bit more time yeah. to get myself ready. Uh -huh. but, but I would, I would, I would run, and there's this one. I beat these guys, and then this one guy who everybody thought was going to toast me. Mm -hmm. I raced against this person, and we were neck to neck. But my problem was, I looked to my right to so, against yeah. him, and at the end of it. We both probably got to the end of the line, got there at the, at, together, but they gave it to him because they thought he was faster. Now, mm. none that's none the case. But if I would have just kept, <laughs> yeah. if I would have just kept focus, I yeah. probably could have beaten him. The, the 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 problem is, and unfortunately, us as a church, we have put our we have married people in their walks compared to ours. Mm -hmm. It makes it hard for a person. Mm -hmm. And as a, as young people in this young generation, we just need to be open, honest. It is a struggle. It is. Yeah. And we yes. have to say, listen, there's times where I'm going to fall and slip, but just like the Bible says, a just man falls seven times, but gets it's back up. up. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, one, one, of, one of the, I mean, I love the Bible. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, Amen. when Jesus, when so I'm gonna pause I really, right. no, man, I really do. It's, yeah. it's like, yeah. uh, all right, it gets yeah. me excited. Um, when, when, the, when, the, when the rich young ruler comes to Christ and, you know, he says, I've done all this stuff, you know, what else should I do? Christ tells him, mm -hmm. follow me, right. yeah, yeah. you know, and our problem is that we can't control follow me. Yeah. Mm. We mm. can't set Good benchmarkers yeah. on yeah, yeah, follow yeah, yeah, yeah. me yeah. Mm. because when you're following Christ, we want to be able to tell people, well, after five months, you should look like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You should yeah. sound like that. Mm. Yeah. You know, if you're going to be arrived, make pure you know? choices yeah. after yeah. six months, you should be able to just look him in the face, hey, no sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We want to tell people, you know, after a little while, you got to do this, but Christ just says, follow me, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and, and the thing mm -hmm. is, yeah, we're going to bump, we're going to hit bumps, you know, the road's going to turn, it's going to, mm -hmm. we're going to go over mountains, valleys, mm -hmm. but our thing is, follow me, and you know, like, I don't mean to bring up uh, Abraham again, but what uh, the Bible says, Abraham didn't do anything special, mm -hmm. he didn't work miracles, yeah. mm -hmm. he didn't found any land, mm -hmm. yeah. he didn't even see the land that God promised him before follow he died, he didn't get to own didn't it, write anything. Yeah. but the Bible yeah. says yeah. that right. he, but what he did was he kept on getting up every morning, and wherever God told him to go, mm -hmm. he, he went, went there, he went. and yeah. the Bible says that yeah. the faith that it took for him to do that, it was accounted to him right. for, righteousness, for righteousness, yeah. for perfection. Yeah. 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 And, and that's really important because if you look at the Bible from, from the beginning to the end, there's always this great three words, he walked, well, four, he walked with God. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Enoch walked with God, Noah walked with God. They mm -hmm. were counted righteous because they mm -hmm. walked with God. Mm -hmm. Walking entails so much, but it's like, all, that's all I have to do is walk with you. It doesn't say run, it just says walk. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. Hmm. Powerful discussion. We may have to do <laughs> talk do some more about five. this thing. Yeah. series. Yeah. But this yeah. is how we're going to end it out here. You know, uh, in Colossians, Paul talks about the mystery of God, which is Christ in you, yeah. the, the hope, hope of glory. Yeah, of glory. Hope of glory. That's God. really what it's all about. If you can just focus on that, allowing Christ to really permeate your life, allowing Christ to really come in, whatever you have to do, listen to your pastor, listen, to, talk to your parents, whatever you have to do, focus on Jesus and a, that relationship you need to have with him. Well, that's our program. Till next time, make pure choices.